Hello Aces, welcome back to module six, lesson number one. Broadcast stations, how do you build your home base? In this lesson, you're gonna learn how do you build your own home base so then that way you can deliver value to your customers and to curate a loyal fan base which will buy from you again and again. So to start off, what's the broadcast station? There are two types of broadcast station. There's your home base and other people's home base. Your home base are where your loyal fans congregate to find your messages. So such as your website, emails. And the pros of this is that you have full control over the communication and what you are pushing out. Now the cons of that is that you have to build your own traffic. And what that means is that, yes, you can have a beautiful website, but when people don't search for it, or if you don't drive traffic to it, people don't go. Now you may be asking, hey Wilson, how about Instagram, how about Facebook, Pinterest, and all the other social platforms? Those are other people's home base. This is platforms where you have not full control, such as Instagram, Facebook. Now the pros of that is that they have a ton of traffic which you can divert into your shop. The cons of that is that your marketing channel can be gone overnight. Guys, I have a friend who owns a pizza shop. They have around 20,000 subscribers, been running it for 30, no, not 30, three plus years. And while he was running it, he was running a lot of publicity stunts, which allowed him to garner a lot of attention. And that's how he was able to build his subscription and his followers. Now, because of the fact that he was doing a lot of publicity stunts, Instagram decided to shut his account off overnight. And overnight, his business just got completely shut off because he was no longer being able to communicate with his customers. He was not able to update his customers and he didn't have the knowledge to create his home base. So now, yes, he can create his own Instagram, a new Instagram again to drive traffic there, but the subscription base never got back to 20,000 subscribers. He basically had to start from scratch again and never got that momentum. And in turn, his business truly got affected. Another example is when TikTok was on the verge of being banned from the United States. And when that happened, a lot of influencers within this platform was scrambling to divert their attention and to divert their followers to either their own emails or other different platforms because if TikTok is banned from the United States, basically their source of income will be completely gone overnight as well. And that's the reason why in this lesson, it is super important for us to actually focus on building our home base. Now, as a disclaimer, I'm not telling you to get off other people's home base. I'm not telling you to go off Instagram. I'm telling you that we need to diversify and be on both. Why is it important to build your home base? And as I was saying, it's the fact that you have full control over the communications with your customers. You're not gonna get censored, you can post anything and you can, sh you can send your customers anything through your email platforms. And at the end of the day, you just don't know when these platforms can change in the future. As an example, Vine and MySpace was super popular five, six years ago, but now a lot of you guys haven't even heard of it. And that's the reason why we need to diversify and make sure that we get our customers emails and we let them know of our website. Once again, you can also deliver value all the time and increase the touch points to stay top of mind in your customer's point of view. And by you being able to stay top of mind through email, by touching them through Instagram, Facebook, and your website, you're able to increase the chances that they're gonna buy from you again and again. Now, what do you deliver when you have emails and you have their emails now? Well, you deliver value. And this is where all your research that you've done in the past few lessons and modules come into play. Ask yourself, is this something your customers would care about? You know your customers deep down now, you have done all the exercises, so you would know whatever you're posting, is it gonna resonate with your customers? Does it solve the job to be done or give your customers something that they need? If you haven't done and if you don't know what job to be done is, make sure you go back to the previous lessons to go over that because it is crucial for you to continue to create value and it is crucial for you to actually proceed with all the lessons in module six as well. Uh, for example, if your customers care about sustainability, 
then they would want to know where your seafood is sourced or whether you're doing your best to reduce waste. And this is something that you can pr promote and this is something that you can actually send emails and tell your customers what you're doing in an effort to support reducing waste. And these are valuable information that your customers would want if this is the niche that you're in. Now, let's get right into it. How do you build your home base? You get it, you're sold, you understand you have to build it. First of all, your home base is building your website. Second, it is to give them a lead magnet, which we'll cover in next lesson. And third is to start delivering value consistently. Now, website. Wilson, I get it. I want to create a website now. How do I do so? Well, there are multiple ways to find and find talent to help you build your website. First of all, is to find a developer locally, either through agencies or freelancers. When you do that, the cost of that ranges from anywhere from two to three, four thousand. Um, that is usually a more expensive way to create your website, but nonetheless, it does give you a lot of um, stress-free handling because these agencies know what they're doing. Second of all is to find a developer online. This is often a lot cheaper than going with agencies and freelancers. Where you can find these people would be Upwork.com or Fiverr.com. And next up is to do it yourself. If you feel that you have the ability to just tinker around, Squarespace, Wix, WordPress, Shopify, these are all great sites, builders, that you can utilize to build your own restaurant website. Some of the necessary components of a website that you would want to communicate with your developers or agencies, or if you were to build yourself, are the following. Does it have your menu? Menu in terms of your photos and description. Photos is key when it comes to menu um, showcasing your product because people eat with their eyes, right? You need to be able to showcase how great the food is and how appealing it is. It is also very worthwhile to invest in a photo shoot of all your photos so then that way you can showcase your products online. Has in your necessary components for your website is also your interior pictures. So basically how does the ambience feel within your restaurant when people are browsing online? For example, if I'm gonna bring my friends and host a dinner of let's say six people for my birthday, I would wanna see how the ambience is like within the restaurant. Does it give a tight, cozy, intimate feeling or is it something that's very like grab and go? By you displaying the interior pictures of your restaurant, you're gonna be able to showcase and give that feeling of what you're trying to display and uh, deliver to your customers so then that way it would increase the chances of people coming to your restaurant. Next up is to have your contact info, address, and your hours. Because of this whole pandemic and everything, a lot of the hours are being disrupted. So people are going on websites to see whether you're open or not. So make sure you communicate that through your websites. Next up, you must have a delivery option. Whether it is through third-party apps or your own delivery option, you must have it on there so then that way people can order from your website right there and then. Does it have a about us and value section? We have done all the legwork in module one and two. This is the, where we're gonna be able to display it. We talked about culture. This is where we're gonna have our stated culture. This is where people get to see our story. So make sure you have it in there. Does it have your social media handles? You spend a lot of time creating your social media. So this is also a place for people to see even more about you, to stalk more about your restaurant. Does it have mobile responsiveness? A lot of people, actually majority of the people nowadays are on their website, on your website through their phones, okay? So if your website doesn't load properly on a mobile device, then it's not gonna work because a lot of people just don't sit in front of desktop or laptop to search for your website, right? So that's the reason why you must have your website that has this mobile responsiveness feature. Uh, next up is to link all the review sites that you're on onto your website as well. So then that way people can actually see, people can stalk you. You make their experience much easier to, to persuade them to come in and dine at your place. And lastly, you need a way to collect 
emails. We're going to be talking about how you're going to have a lead magnet. So then that way you can start collecting emails. And once again, why is it important to collect emails? It is a way to connect with them. It is a way to send messages to them. It's like having their number on speed dial. And basically you can actually communicate with them through emails. And that's really, really important in today's age. So in this lesson, you talk, we talked about how do you create your broadcast stations to keep your loyal fans engaged. And next up, we're going to be talking about how do you grow your own broadcast station through lead magnets. I'll see you guys in the next lesson.